Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Art Show. My name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be doing grass and dirt. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I do is hold the pencil really far away and work really light, doing a little cube for perspective. Now I'm doing really uh, kind of like a basic lines, uh, going all over the idea that I have in my mind. Uh, you cannot just start from one part and finish in another. You have to work the whole thing at the same time because you're starting to molding the drawing. So once I have the overall idea, I can start doing little little details on it. But these are not final details. These are just more to fill um, to fill the page with more. Uh, complex you have to grow up in complexity your drawing you have to grow your drawing in complexity so now what I'm doing is the line weight which is a uh, uh, kind of like a darker line or more uh, thick line and I'm using another um, pencil with a with, with a bigger uh, tip and this gives me another look to it now what I'm doing right now is just cutting the, the drawing, you can do this after taking a picture or making a scan of the drawing. I recommend a picture because it's quicker for me, um, but if you do it with a photo, with a picture, you have to stand really far away of the drawing and use the zoom, because you, if you do it, if you just close uh, on the drawing and take the picture, you could have some perspective problem because of the lens. So you may want to avoid that problem by standing far away with the camera using the sum and take the picture. So now I'm basically just changing the colors. Um, I, here I'm taking the grass uh, with the with the laser tool and go to image adjustments and then hue and saturation and I can change the color. And once I have the colors that I really want, that I want to work with, I can do other stuff like changing the values and you know the brightness and contrast of the of the colors and all that and I can do that neither by using the dodge tool which is the one I'm wanting to use right now or maybe we're just painting um, with the lighter color uh, here I'm using a clipping mask I'm just painting with a lighter color or you can use um, the laser tool again in the dirt because the dirt is more like a, a rigid thing is not soft as the as the grass or translucent so you could use the laser tool and change the brightness so now in a few seconds I'm going to explain you this a little bit more because I'm, some of you might be confused of why am I doing this um, so I'm going to explain you with more detail <clears throat> but basically it's just going further as you can with the less effort as possible at the beginning because later you're going to spend a lot of time in this painting. Okay, so let's, let's explain the hue and saturation tool because some people might just not know. So we go to image adjustments, uh, hue and saturation, there we go. Control U in my computer, it, it, it could change, that could change depending on what, which computer you're using. So um, here is the hue, which is the kind of like a tone of the color it changes here's the saturation if you go all the way to the left you got uh, a grayscale image if you, go, if you go all the way to the right you got oversaturated image which is image with too, too much color basically and the normal um, is zero and if you go uh, all the way to the left in lightness you get completely dark if you go all the way to the right with the lightness is completely white but a special thing is you click here in colorize what happens look if you change the colors normally with the hue it just change the colors you have but if you click colorize it 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 doesn't care about the colors of the image it will put everything of the same color and is it going to be the color you, you choose so you could use this for something um, just have it on your mind and when you think you you can you have to use it you do it so basically with the dirt what I did was um, I mean in the first part with the grass what I did was select the part of the grass and just changing the color remember that I had the the everything was brown and I changed the color of the brown grass to green 
and basically with the with the dirt what i did was just select the color the uh, areas that i wanted with more highlights with more um burned by the light where the light hit the most i just select those uh, spots and then go to adjustments brightness and contrast and by doing that i can get a brighter color of the one the one that i have now this work with with the dirt because the dirt is really opaque but for something like um red cloth it will be different because the red when you have it on light is not pink it's not lighter red which is pink it's even is even more red so is you have to know where to use this and when to not for the dirt i can i can tell you that it's more than okay to use this technique now what you can do uh, that you can also do is you painting something red or painting something of another color is after you select all the all the spots that you want to to make lighter you can do the brightness and brightness and contrast change make it more brighter but then later you can go to hue and saturation and put more saturation on it <clears throat> like this and now I'm changing the tone because I don't need any any more saturation that just a little but I'm telling you if you're painting something like like the normal thing is that the the saturation goes up to with the lightness with the brightness because that's how light works and now what I'm going to do is blend the color so basically what I'm going to do is just take the colors that I already have and we're going to go all the way on the edges first so I take this color and I'm using 50% opacity, which means it blends half the intensity. So if I paint on top of that, what I get is the same color kind of like mixed with the one that is outside. So what I'm going to do is just paint with that color, then take a bit more again and paint with that color. And the way I do the transition from that color to another is just doing again the eyedropper selecting with the with the eye on the keyboard or the alt if you're using the B for the brush and you can paint on top of that again and you just go to the eyedropper again and then just paint again and that's it you repeat that process a lot of times and you will eventually learn how to blend the colors with um, efficacy so this is the, the best way that I know to paint uh, dirt because you can see it gives a little bit of texture and I don't like to do texture with the brushes like with tricks I like to do it that you actually have to do the texture yourself that way you learn more than if you use a tricked uh, brush And basically that's all that you need to know about blending and it will depend on how much time you spend doing this process that you will have a really soft blending or something like this which I prefer I prefer to look like this that look than looking really soft um, the other thing that I did with the grass was uh, to paint the a lighter color or to use the Dutch tool so let's explain a bit more about these tools which are the letter O if I select the sponge tool, what, what happens is that you get um, uh, a saturation off. If I use a burn tool, I get this. And you have to be sure that it says shadows or, mi or mid-tones. And you burn the surface with a darker color, the darker version of the same color. If you use the dodge tool and go to highlights, you can get the lighter color of the same that you want. So it's basically putting some lightness or brightness uh, dynamically so that's the dodge tool for the dodge tool tool for so now what I'm going to do is the same that I explained you a few seconds ago I'm going to do it all over the the material all over this uh, kind of like a um, cube of dirt but I'm going to select another color see I'm putting another color they are uh, warm colors this brown is lighter than the one i have it's more saturated too but it's in the shadows uh, side of the object so that's something that you have to keep in mind so now um 
<clears throat> Sometimes I use a timer to know how much time I'm spending on things. You don't have to do it if you if you have time, but I'm really kind of like um, <laughs> constantly have to be aware of the time that I do this kind of stuff. So now using this brush, which I explain at the end how to create it. Um, using this brush, what you what I have to do is just take the colors I want. Maybe I put a, a little a little bit lighter color on it, but you should be doing it with the same color that you want you, that you have already, and just uh, select them with the eyedropper and then use it again. I mean, keep painting. Um, and it's just vertical lines uh, with a little bit of curve, uh, the diagonal too. Um, and that's basically the way that you do grass. There's no magic uh, brush to make grass or lazy brush to make uh, grass because it will look like that, it will look fake, it will look um, like a computer grass. So we're trying to avoid that. Okay, so now what I'm doing is just putting some um, highlights on the rocks which are really just taking the color that I already have and selecting a lighter one in the palette of colors. I want you to notice that I used another um, tone for this little, uh, is, there's like a little change in the tones that I'm using right now for the dirt. Um, so that's what I want you to focus on this tutorial. That you don't have to use just the same color and make it lighter. You can just you can change a little bit the hue. You can make it a, a, little, bit, a little bit more reddish, a little bit more. Uh, it could be more yellow, more orange. But if you go the other way, if you you make it, you mix it a little bit with blue is uh, uh, it gets colder and when it gets colder you should apply that color in the shadow part of the of the object or in this case the dirt when when talking about grass is different because grass is another kind of material is more like translucent so you can focus on the shadows you can do some um, here I actually um, dim down the saturation a bit because it was too colorful and when it is too colorful it tends to look uh, cartoonish and right now I'm just doing an edge um, kind of like a backlight to it because you know, it, it gives more like a dramatic um, look to the tutorial it, this wouldn't happen too much in the real life because in real life you have one source of light which is the the sun but if you have another source of light could happen uh, but it have to be really strong because um, here I'm having a light coming from the left and it's hitting kind of like the the top right of the cube here I'm putting a little bit more of uh, I want I want to select this to have more bright and I did a little bit more saturation on those parts that's important you cannot just do the the highlights, putting more brightness. With the dirt, you can, as, as I said before. But it, I recommend that you change the lightness, the brightness, and the saturation too, because it's a more believable that way. That's how it actually happens. When you have something with light, you turn on the brightness of the object and the saturation of the object. As the example that I gave you with the red cloud, if you have a red cloud, um, you can have. You cannot just make the when the, when the light hits the cloud, it doesn't get pink. It's not red, a lighter red. Lighter red will be pink. But with the light, if you have a light on it, it will be r more red. It will be like super saturated red instead of pink. So that's a big mistake. A lot of um, people that is starting uh, do when they have something red or blue, they just made it lighter, and it should actually be more saturated, and that's it. Depending on the material, uh, it could change. 
why not? But the normal thing will be this, to have more saturated, more brightness color. <clears throat> and right now that I'm feeling the detail, you have to get really close to it and just get to with a really small brush and get to the details of it. That's it. So I want you to notice um, here is where the I, I have different colors here and here. Um, this is the the main spot for the highlight. This is the most highlight part of the of the object. And I have this kind of like a transition from this bright to that dark, but the dark is still a uh, uh, lighter version of the shadow part uh, in, in, in comparison with the shadow part. So my, my surface here, this surface here is this flat. And then, <clears throat> let me erase this here. Then we have this kind of like a little variations um, and he, he, the light hits this way. The, he, he is, he's, here doesn't hit and here doesn't hit. It's like this part of shadows. So it looks kind of like a stair. Same happens in the top here. I hit the light here, he doesn't. Here hits the light, he doesn't. And it's kind of like a stair, but a really, um, <laughs> really deformed kind of a stair. But in the shadows, in the shadow part, uh, you're gonna have black. Here I have some blacks. But in the shadow part, you should have um, the same color, but bluish. The ambient light here should be gray, actually, but I made it blue. Gray because my my ambient is gray. But in real life, it, it will be blue because of the sky. Uh, it wouldn't be so dark, obviously. It will be more light because the, the light of the sky is, is lighter. And you have this kind of like a, it's the same color of the light side, but it's a lot more darker and reddish color. Um, it's not the same here. <clears throat> so what is, can I tell you here? <clears throat> mm, let me see. In the grass, I have this kind of like a holes. Um, kind of to give more variation and randomness to the grass. It cannot be just perfect grass. Or well, everything of the same size. Everything is like is like a, the, like like a short hair. No, uh, it will be very random. It have some dark spots. Uh, we have these ones that are bigger. This grass that are bigger. And here I put a little bit of backlight too. Same as the grass, I put a backlight on the dirt. You can see the backlight here on the grass too. Uh, in the roots, you have, I have some roots backlit. Same here, I have this big um, grass there and other little ones. So basically, you just have to be kind of random with it. So, okay, now back to the tutorial. I'm here starting to add the details. Um, I was just showing you that so you know how it looks at the end and some of the decisions that I made. So basically just taking a really, the thing is that the, the, the brush that I'm using has a really uh, tiny tip when you use it um, soft in the tablet. When you use it hard, you make it um, thicker. But the, the case in here is not that one. Here is more like um, the brush changed the size of the, with the pressure of the pen. So when I need to do really little um, details, I just press it really soft and I have tiny, tiny lines. When, when I have to do um, thicker lines, I just press it, um, I just press it harder and I get those thick um, uh, lines and I can control, I can control the opacity with the numbers. Um, or you can just control the opacity up there with the little bar and stuff. And when you use it thick with the opacity, it's kind of like the same uh, for for blending the colors. So the brush that I use, that a lot of people will will like to know, is this one. But I'm going to explain you how to create it because you need to learn how to create brushes. So I'm going to take any of the circle brush. This one, this one could work any of the simple brush 
and then I'm going to press F F5 to open the the brush controls and going to shape dynamics see we see we have the size jitter uh, with, the, with the pen pressure and the minimum diameter is a minimum uh, the control of the size jitter should be pen pressure so this result happens if I press a uh, little uh, if I press um, soft I get a light, um, really tiny line if I press harder I get a thick line now we go to brush tip shape and the spacing is the repetition how much does it does the dot repeat because a line is a repetition of dots that's it it's no uh, it's a simple way to explain it so 10% of spacing is more than good if you don't want any deformation if you put 1% it will be too heavy and I have to the roundness I have to take it down uh, vertically so you have this nice shape and that's it this is the brush that I use for creating the grass and everything in this tutorial it is one of my favorite brush now to save it you just click in, uh, in this button right there just click in there and save it and <clears throat> it will be at the end of all the brushes so now I, I want to talk to you about my patreon page um, here I'm actually selecting the colors of this um, tutorial so you can have it kind of like a palette of colors in case you, you want to do it uh, the exercise because you're going to have the line art in the PSD uh, in the PSD there's the, the well the line art is actually the drawing you're gonna have to kind of repeat the same steps that I did if you want to learn it right and so here I'm selecting the color for you in case you kind of um, I don't know get lost in the process so you have them and <clears throat> Yeah, well, my Patreon page is, is only two dollars the month, and for those two dollars, you can have the PSD. Every time I, I upload a tutorial, you have the PSD and an extra video with all the process, uh, because this video is uh, edited, and in all the process, you can see all the mistakes and everything that I did step by step. And now, if you want to help me with the Patreon, you can do it here with the skin tutorial which is a skin tutorial that I made a few, few months ago uh, it has all the line arts that I used but the tutorial concentrates on the how to paint uh, the faces um, so you will have this how to achieve this result of this face um, and the, the man the man too, the male uh, you can here you can learn how to paint the, the beard, short beard, a little bit of hair and it's basically a recipe, it's basically a recipe of how to paint skin it's really a step by step, really slow process but you have the skin tone, you have the palette of colors, you have the liners, you have a guide of 20 pages everything you need to learn to learn it so if you cannot have it with pattern, you can do it with this, the links are in the description thank you very much